2017 NBA Draft is widely recognized as one of the weirder drafts. Lots of players drafted high that didn't fill their potential, like Markel Fultz, Lonzo Ball, Josh Jackson, and Frank Ntilikina, and then a lot of studs taken later in the draft, such as Donovan Mitchell, Kyle Kuzma, Bam Adebayo, John Collins, Jared Allen, Josh Hart, and Monte Morris, and then some straight up confusing players like Dennis Smith Jr. and Laurie Markkinen. Amongst the mix though, there's Jonathan Isaac, who has just straight up gone under the radar the past few years. This could be partially attributed to him playing in Orlando, but also because he hasn't played good enough to be a steal, or bad enough to be a bust. Jonathan Isaac's first season in the league was less, actually a lot less than mediocre, averaging 5.4 points, 3.7 rebounds, 0.7 assists, and a 44.3 effective field goal percentage in only 19.9 minutes per game. He did show a lot of upside in the defensive end, averaging 1.2 steals and 1.1 blocks with a 104 defensive rating. As well as this, the opponent shot 3.5% worse and had a negative 7.5 offensive rating when he was on the floor. However, this didn't excuse his offense, which when he was on the floor, his team shot 2.9% worse and had a negative 10.4 offensive rating. All in all, his defense was just not enough to make up for his inefficiency in the offensive end. In the 2018-2019 season, his minutes jumped up to 26.6, and he posted a significant improvement on the offensive end, posting a 49.9 AFG while scoring 9.6 points per game and assisting on one basket a game. His rebounding jumped up to 5.5 per game, and although his steals went down, his blocks went up. His defensive rating did jump up 2 points, which isn't a good thing, however as I mentioned earlier, his offense improved greatly and he added 20 points to his offensive rating. Somehow his on-off defense fell though, as the opposition actually scored slightly more when he was on, but nevertheless, his team scored 2.6 more points per 100 possessions when he was on the court. It all comes down to if the team is playing better with you as a net value, and this season he did do that. Now for this current season, in which Jonathan Isaac has quietly played at an all-defensive level. Not only is he averaging 1.4 steals and 2.7 blocks, but he's also posting a 99 defensive rating which is considered borderline elite, along with a 5.4 defensive box plus minus, which is second in the league only behind Nerlens Noel. Isaac has outstanding at reading passing lanes, here you can see him with good positioning on the weak side pick and roll, another thing he's been good at, and picking off the seemingly easy pass to Miles Turner. He is second among the league in block percentage with 8.0 only behind Mitchell Robinson. So in other words, he is blocking 1 out of every 12.5 shots per game as a predominant small forward. He is a good transition defender which is a place where he gets a large portion of his blocks. Here you can see him quickly getting back on defense, then facing up to the 3 guys trying to get a basket, and then reads who's going to take it. He then uses his length on the other end to euro his way to a bucket. He's 12th in the league in defensive win shares, and considering he's on a good rebounding team, he's also rebounding well at 7.3 per game. This is one of the biggest concerns for him coming into the league. Not only was he wiry, but he was also easily able to be shoved around by stronger opponents. He grew 6 inches late in his high school years, so he's obviously had to fill out that frame of his. However, the length he currently has is deadly on both ends of the floor, and he knows how to use it to his advantage. Anyhow, he's filled out his frame a little bit, and here you can see he fights well for the rebound against a stronger opponent in DeMontis Sabonis. And another clip here of him pushing Blake Griffin out of the paint on a post up. With player tracking data, it is concluded that players are shooting a mere 40.3% in Isaac's presence. And one more thing, Jonathan Isaac is averaging 0.6 more blocks than Rudy Gobert this season. Once again, playing mostly a small forward. There are times when he will play at center, and that can make it easier to get blocks, but you cannot pound on him for that. The fact that he is consistently able to guard fives shows just how versatile of a defender he really is. Along with his defense, he has made huge leaps as an offensive player. Since the Magic are predominantly comprised of good big men, the expectation for Isaac to be a good 3 point shooter is very high. Even though shooting isn't his natural strength, he is still shooting 33.9% from 3 on 3.9 attempts per game, which isn't by any means outstanding, however it is a small jump from last season. He currently has a 52.6 effective field goal percentage, along with scoring 13 points per game, and has improved his playmaking as well. He's posting a 109 offensive rating, which is up 2 from his previous season, 
has an 18.9 PER, and although his offensive box plus minus is negative, it's not horrible. He has shown some Kevin Durant-like skills and tendencies, which makes me question if that's the ceiling's playstyle, here you can see a smooth pull-up, and he doesn't always make his jumpers, but the technique and shot selection is there, and the fact that he is willing to take those shots is a good thing for his potential. Advanced metrics don't lie either, as Isaac is ranked 8th in Defensive Raptor, and 12th in Total Raptor and Raptor 538's metric, mostly behind bona fide superstars. Finally for his contribution to the team. So far when he is on the court, his team scores 106.2 points per 100 possessions and shoots 49.7%, which are both huge net ratings from when he's off. And on the defensive end, opposing teams score 3.3 less points per 100 when he's on, also at a more inefficient rate. Their assist percentage also goes down. So you may be asking, what if the player is backing him up is straight cheeks? And yes, this is a big problem with on-off statistics, is that a lot of the time your prowess in the stack can be altered by having a bad backup at your position and or the team having good lineups in without you. In this case, it is almost the opposite though, as the Magic's backup small forward is Alfred Kaminu, who even though has had a slow start, is both a very good defender and a solid offensive player, especially for the Trailblazers last season so Jonathan Isaac's on-off stats are in no way inflated by any means necessary. Jonathan Isaac, Nikola Vucevic, Aaron Gordon, and Evan Fournier are all averaging essentially the same amount of minutes, and as of right now, Isaac seems to be low-key their best player. Aaron Gordon has just been a ghost these past couple of seasons, possibly just sulking in his own misery after getting snubbed in the 2016 dunk contest, and Nikola Vucevic has just been straight cheeks so far for no obvious reason. Isaac is shooting the best from the field out of those four guys, has the best box plus minus, is clearly the best defender, and has the second best offensive rating behind Fournier. Him along with Markel Fultz and Evan Fournier are basically the only players in the team playing well, as even veterans like DJ Augustine and Terrence Ross are playing like middle school girls. Jonathan is one of the only positives on the defensive end for this team in general. He's currently blocking 60.6% .6 of his team's shots, which is only being surpassed by Tristan Thompson, Chris Depps Przingis, and Rudy Gobert. Coming into the draft, he is viewed as basically a Kevin durant Richard Lewis hybrid, and although so far he doesn't seem to resemble either of those two players, he is making his mark as an individual. He poses some flaws, but overall he's been quite efficient and has been extremely smart under the defensive end, rarely taking bad gambles. The way Jonathan Isaac has been playing, I wouldn't be surprised if he makes an all-defensive team and possibly even win the most improved award. He could very well be the future of the Magic's franchise, if they even have one, and turn into an all-star one day, possibly even in the next couple of years. So thank you all for watching. If you want to see more NBA content like this, subscribe to my channel. But thank you buddies for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.